<laughs> Welcome back to our second part of the tech short with the Fraction Finder. We decided to set up something slightly different to talk about what the Fraction Finder is evolved to. Now, we have Tim from Aerometrics here still with us. Tim, I remember when we first came out with the Fraction Finder, um, we were sort of talking about this before, customers would look at it and be like, wow, that's like really cool. How did you do that? I can't believe it. Like, boom, right? But what's the first thing they said afterwards? Can it go in a chromatography column? Yep. And we're all scratching our heads going, but why at first, you know, because they have chromatography machines and, but it can. It can. So um, tell us from that first question, like, I mean, I remember it being the first time we, we were releasing the show, the first question that was up the table was, can this also go in a chromatography column? I think we said yes, but there had to be some mods and some, some, some sensitivity done to it. But overall, it can see stuff. You just want to clarify what you can see, right? That's right. So what have you guys done from that, from that original product idea and the development, and where is it at now with the different features and things you can hook up to it and the different things you can do? Yeah, so um, initially, uh, when people were talking about chromatography, uh, it was uh, making sure that they can see THC, and a lot of times if they're processing stuff that they don't want to be hot, they don't want to have the THC, and luckily that's some a place where Fraction Finder really mm -hmm. thrives. Um, so, and when you're dealing with chromatography, you're talking about a very, very, very small percentage of THC. So what we did is uh, the original sensor worked okay, but we created this ultra-sensitive sensor. And, mm -hmm. and what we actually did is we, um, we uh, made, it, made the fraction finder, the signal to noise, just much, much more sensitive so it can detect much lower levels of THC, which started becoming very, very useful in chromatography. Where did that lead past chromatography? So um, we're, we're having a lot of fun with chromatography and we started to do a work with ethanol extraction. And uh, the nice thing, uh, you know, with ethanol extraction, uh, you want to make sure that you uh, don't extract too long because uh, after, after the material, after the THC and the cannabinoids are spent, uh, if you keep going, you're going to get more and more chlorophyll. So there's a real advantage to um, not, uh, not taking that raw material and passing too much fluid through it. Uh, so we found an early application with ethanol mm -hmm. just to make sure that uh, you minimize your time. So one of our mutual customers was able to cut their time in half. They just didn't have yeah. to circulate as much ethanol really in. couldn't find those answers for chromatography until the extraction guys came in and said, another idea, can we put on our alcohol extractor? That's right. right? That's and that right. was the instant next step to developing and, and, and seeing what you can and can't see because I think with chromatography, it was, it was there, but you had to develop it still. You know, and this way you were finding much, much, much more illuminated clues on the, on the things that are being um, displayed on the... On, on the screen through the alcohol testing, right? Yeah, so, and, and it's interesting because they, they came at a similar time, uh, basically with the ethanol extraction and with the chromatography, we need more sensitivity, which caused us to innovate the sensor further. That was like the last design change we made is to some of the sensors, we actually changed them so they're that much more sensitive. So not only do you use the fraction finder for distillations and for chromatography and for alcohol extractions, but that led to what's the biggest surprise the industry is hydrocarbon this this is so, this is huge uh josh over at amp helped uh with you to design and produce this product um let me just so this doesn't fall off put this in your hand tell us about this sim this is uh design number uh four actually um so first we uh created uh, a way to put our sensor um in in a, in a place where we can actually see that fluid with 1.5 inch sanitary flanges. That worked well. <clears throat> However, uh, with cryo, what happens? Cracks. Things ice up. Yeah. Things or, ice or, up. Or, or yes, yes. You can't so see literally, the there's ice. ice on the side and we are an optical device. At the end of the day, something, you know, there, there's, a, there's a piece of glass. It's yeah. got to go through the piece of glass before I get signal. So if, there, if it's dark and if there's ice on it, we can't see it. So the next thing we had to tackle is the whole, how do we avoid ice? So then what we did is we created um, a device that, um, that uh, actually had a um, shield around it. So, so literally, it's a glass shield in here, and then we created this device where this thing went in it, then we evacuate all the air mm -hmm. out and we backfill with nitrogen. That way there's no water vapor there. Yeah, so you can get as cold as you want and the ice will pile up in front or behind, but never in the sensor zone. Right. That worked really well. So now we, we solved the cryo problem. But then the butane guys are like, hey, uh, how do you feel about you know, mm -hmm. 200 PSI? We're like, don't use that. <laughs> yeah. So then we had to innovate further um, and we had to make this thing even stronger. Um, and we also noticed uh, we used to uh, use another uh, material that wasn't so fond with acetone. As you know, you clean a lot of things with mm -hmm. acetone. Yeah. So that didn't work. So then here's our last design. And, you know, Josh really innovated quite a bit uh, to help us out with that uh, over at AMP. Uh, so, so this has this external uh, piece, and it's, a, it's quite a solid piece. 
Um, and uh, that way, that Which way- Which also in turn helps seal from outside chemicals, hydrocarbons, other things from getting inside as well too. That's so right. So protects the users. That's right. And uh, so we've, we've uh, actually tested this. We, we certify it for 240 PSI because that's what the shot glass inside is mm -hmm. rated for. Um, but we've tested uh, this up to 800 PSI. So we feel wow. pretty comfortable that uh, this device is gonna really serve the hydrocarbon industry really well. But generally we, that test rate, you still wanna stay a third of that. You do not want to exceed that at any point. And if they needed to, they'd call you and you develop another unit that's safe for that application. That's right, that's right. Let's stick to the rated materials yeah. that are used in here. So all, three, all the shiny ones is 316 stainless steel. So it actually touches the product um, is, uh, is uh, shot glass, uh, 316 stainless steel, mm -hmm. and uh, Teflon. So tell us what you guys found using it for closed loop because a lot of people don't understand that it's the same product. It's the same sensitivity product, but it was almost not accidental, it was planned. It was an engineered effect, but like, what'd you find? What, what was so important that, that now makes this so useful for, for closed loops? So closed loop guys are like, hey, I want that on my system. They use ex uh, kind of expensive systems like correlates meters and all those kinds of things. But all those things are indirect measurements. They don't tell you the molecules that are flowing through. So wouldn't it be nice to know if my filters were working? Or I don't know about you, but when, I, when I'm looking at this butane extraction, it takes a long time to get all mm -hmm. that uh, butane to, to reconstitute it in all those pumps. Or if you're doing that a right. really good job and you can't see because it's not very colorful, this can see what you can't see. So yes. it can be a clear fluid and you still might have some THC and you're guessing, did I over extract? Am I not extracting? What's going on here? But this tells you what? It's your eyes. It tells you delta nine, it tells you lipids, and it tells you chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. So Elliot, we put so this- So when one goes in and out, the next one will come in as a, as, a, as a major spike. So it'll tell you no more gas. Shut the gas, go to recover. Yeah, and, and by the way, this is R&D, right? Yeah. Uh, it's no, no longer R&D now, it's a product. But um, when we were actually doing this initial work, it was pretty neat. Uh, so you know what you do is um, after you take out the bag, you want to clean out your column. So mm -hmm. you put you know, several pounds of butane through, uh, through a, a, a material column to get all the residual out before you repack and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, or throw all your bags into a column and extract them all. Yes, yes, to, yes. To clean them. So guess what we found? Huh. Huh. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Oh, look, chlorophyll. Oh, now it's gone. So before, we just cleaned it enough to know that it was probably clean. Here, we could actually see it. Was there a savings in fluid when you did it? Um, so that's what it leads to. So how much fluid do I really need to go through and do that? Yes. So after a couple of times, how long does it take for the chlorophyll peak to go away? Then you know, then you can dial in your system. That's fabulous. Yes. I think that's really, really exciting. And what other features does the uh, ultra sensitive unit attach to for other things, other principal applications that, that people can use it for? Well, if I could talk about butane for just one more moment. Yeah, oh, no, the, of course, the, of course. The, the other cool thing that we sound is, is uh, you know, when you, when you do the butane uh, filtration, right, it goes, there's before the filter, it goes through the filter, the color remediation, then after the filter. Yes. Big question is, what kind of filtering should I use? What kind of color remediation? Is it working or how much, how fast should I flow and all that kind of stuff? So we came up with several hypotheses by putting this device where I can molecularly see actually what's coming out before and what's after. We could actually see the level of lipids and chlorophyll just going away. Is that a more than one unit? Uh, theory to, to apply to, or is it you like could, you can use it in one spot and learn what it is and then use it in another spot and then learn what's going on? Yeah, that's what we so did. So move it around. We moved it around. But the user could get two if they needed to. Of course. By two, great. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that, that's really, really cool. I think this is like one of the greatest ideas because everyone does hydrocarbon. You know, there's, there's very few people who do commercial alcohol and even at that point they're running the fluids through and it's more of a finicky uh, personal process. Everyone has their own, you know, hot, cold, different types of alcohol. But with really interesting... Uh, stuff like hydrocarbons, especially when they do cold extractions, you can't see the color of the fluid. You it's can't. a guess. Am I putting the whole tank through to get everything out, or like did I already get it out halfway through? And as you said before, recovery time is the only major uh, issue with butane machines. Uh, it's when you pressurize it, when you recover it, that's the time it takes to pull the... F to, to bang, 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 yeah, bang, exactly. bang, bang. <laughs> exactly. So if you can use half the fluid and you've realized, hey, I've gotten 99.9% .9 of my THC out, I'm coming into chlorophyll, shut the machine down. And so now you have a cleaner extract, less fluid, more efficient machine. Absolutely. That's really cool. I, this is an amazing product. Yeah. What, and be, you know, before I ask, what else do you guys use these for now that is in application from what you've learned with the ultra sensitive systems? So it's interesting um, from, a, from a cannabis uh, perspective, we've got um, you know, the, the butane extraction, the ethanol extraction, uh, chromatography, and of course, uh, um, sure path distillation. Um, these systems have been used on uh, white film uh, mm -hmm. distillations as well. Um, we haven't yet uh, gone into solvent recovery, but um, that might be a, a very interesting uh, next phase of the application. By the way, you know, we're talking about all this um, way of 
being able to understand what the molecules are as mm -hmm. they flow through. And really what everybody in this industry wants to do, and what we want to do, is we want to help people um, up their game and make safer medicine. At the end of the yeah, day, that's the what it's all about. So once we're able to uh, give this technology to people um, and we're able to potentially in the future correlate all this really good run information with with the information that comes from, from testing, we can all up our game. We can all work yeah. together and up our game and be able to other, make safer medicine for everybody. Other users who purchase it might repurpose it in a different part of their lab and find a new use for it. And then they're calling you saying, how do we get that on the screen? How do we see what we want to see? We just found another use for this. Yes. I think it's really uh, like an amazing product. It's one of my favorite, especially now that we have it in this type of, a, uh, of, of an enclosure for, for closed loops, I think it's, uh, the next big thing for closed loops, it's, it's going to make a big difference for customers. For sure, for sure. And to uh, further answer your question, uh, there's things that I can't talk about because yeah. we have these R&D relationships with customers that we hold very dear. Um, but people are coming to us every day. They're like, hey, we want to do it this way. Can you help us? Yes. And sometimes the answer is yes. And sometimes the answer is, I don't know if it fluoresces. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so um, what we found with this is this technology seems to lend itself to several, several different ways of just helping us figure out better ways to process, better ways to, to, to get that better medicine. Have you ever had one customer tell you it wasn't useful? No. 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 People I've say, had pros tell me that they've seen things that they've never seen before. Yep. Yep. Now, there, there are some people that they do what they do and it works well enough. Yeah. And so for those people... You know, they don't need it. Totally. Uh, but for, the, for other folks that are dialing in their things and they want to do research and they really want to see what they care about flow through so they can make yeah. real-time decisions, that's where this product is really focused on. I remember when we first came out with it, I used to text you like, what am I looking at? Like, did we do the right thing? And Tim, as an uh, engineer and scientist, for instance, knows what that graph looks like. And he says, oh my God, I'm seeing more than you are. Like, <laughs> you know, like this is really good results. And um, I, I always tell people, I was very good at distilling before I had the fraction finder. I knew pretty much, I, I told myself I knew everything I knew. And when I put it on there, I started learning new things. I literally had higher potencies. I was able to cut fractions down. I was able to see what was going on. And you know, um, we're only human. We don't have digital eyes. We don't. We can only see certain things, but this has a digital eye. It does. And this allows you to see so much more than you would uh, uh, normally been able to interpret, you know? so. Uh, I've had a lot of customers tell me that um, maybe they'll use it for six months and they'll put it down, but they'll always go back to it because when they started using it, it trained them on that SOP. And then, you know, they started um, seeing patterns and knowing that, that what they were doing was in point, but then they went to maybe D8 conversions. They brought the tool back out to see what they were doing that they couldn't normally see. But if you were to fill up the column with media and then put a product through and separate it, even if you use multi-solvent product, multi-solvent blends to move the, po the product through, it will separate in bands. So kind of like, I, I used to tell people with chromatography, it was very simple. It was uh, basically a bed of sand, and you want to think of it like little race cars. Some of them are smaller, lighter, faster, some mm -hmm. of them are heavier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the lighter, faster molecules will rush through like a race, and they will band out at times and then come out with a specific uh, fluctuation of a density. So that fluid coming out for this amount of time will be one fraction, and then it will you know, clear up a little bit and the fluid coming out of the next time will be another fraction. Believe it or not, this is just like in motion chromatography. So where a large machine might have a 99.9% .9 accuracy on ultraviolet um, signals and the graphs you get, this one is still just as accurate, but it's for uh, bulk uses. So a lot of customers can run um, large tanks, I think, Breaking Dabs has a large, large tank, mm -hmm. and he runs gallons of this with a fraction finder and a pump under it to find the fractions that he wants and knows where it's coming out, as an example. So a lot of customers can actually flush the fluid through here, and at a certain period of time, they'll see a certain spike. And then that spike goes down because that fraction, the density in the material in the fluid flowing goes down. So the next fraction comes out. There's also remediation uh, principles where you mm. want to see, like, remove pesticides and some chlorophylls and some other stuff. So we could use like silica 60 in the column, run our material through and actually see when the THC has come down and when the back fractions, the one in the rears are starting to touch. Mm -hmm. So we can stop the chlorophyll or the unwanted stuff from flushing through because our eyes can only see as the material turns color. We don't have digital eyes. We can't see the invisible stuff. Right. So the chromatography is another um, method of utilizing the fraction finder, um, especially in small cases or in large cases. Mm -hmm. So as a small chromatography, HPLC runs very small columns and gives an extremely you know, accurate stream and a separation. When you're doing major scale stuff, you're not looking for that last one, you know, that last 
fraction of a percent. You just want to separate the main portions out of everything, and this will tell you what you're doing. Uh, and a lot of times when users ask, how does it work, it's, it's hard to say. Start running your fluid through there and watch for the pattern. And you start to see, oh, hey, I have a huge amount of THC coming out here. And on the back end, the THC is done on getting chlorophyll or lipids or other things that are coming through there. So it does help in chromatography as well. Gotcha. Do you think um, when you're doing chromatography, um, this uh, and chromatography is not trivial. Like you need to be kind of sharp mm -hmm. to figure out how to do all this stuff. Um, how do you think it might be able to help train someone? Like if I know chromatography and I'm expanding and I want to help, I want to train someone else to do chromatography. How do you think something like this might be able to help? You know, as a user who's experienced with chromatography, most of the ones I talk to, you always have the one guy in the lab who knows it and the rest of the guys who are just copying the principal process. Yeah. And they're slightly guessing because they're saying, whoa, well, run about five liters through there and you <laughs> push your fraction out. And then somewhere around there, you'll start seeing the bands move and push another 10 liters through there. Well, wouldn't it be really cool if like you could see when the spike is up and when the spike is down? So it's gonna help all users, especially if you're learning from scratch, you can actually put a remediation powder through this, push uh, some kind of a dirty extract through there and see an actual difference, you know, and then know that, hey, I've pushed my cannabinoids through there, there's nothing left. Why am I putting more fluid through there? Right. So you can immediately switch over and start putting, you know, acetone, clean the column out. And then when the spike goes away, the acetone is showing clean acetone. So you can redo the process. So it has a lot of different functionality in the instance of chromatography or extraction. Gotcha. So it can help with training, can help validate what you're doing anyway. And uh, what about the research aspect of it? A lot of people keep that to themselves. <laughs> you know, uh, we, we rarely hear exact numbers. And I think the reason is because everyone's extract is different. Yes. yes and so yes, it yes. helps individual people research where they want to extract it. And, you know, I tell a lot of people with, with, with short paths, I could tell you my process is 200 degrees or 150 degrees, but you can't replicate it unless you have the same process, same feedstock, same pumps, same everything. So when someone gives you a tip on how to do chromatography, you may not even be in the right zone. You might be you know, there, but not in the exact spot, and this will help you find it. What if your media is denser and it takes more solvent to go through or less solvent? What if your product isn't as dirty and it rushes through quicker? It'll help the user learn and see what's going on. Gotcha. It's really cool. I like it. It's, it's an amazing product. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming by, Tim. Thank you so much. And if you have any other questions about this or you'd like us to help develop another one, give Tim a call. He will, he will help you out with any of your ultraviolet fluorescence needs. Thank you. Thank you.